your life. Hi everyone, how you doing? Happy Friday! It's definitely a TGI Friday today, isn't it? So, uh, well, mind you saying that, they're all rolling into one again. Oh, hang on. Oh, there, so there we go, we thought we were all organised. Settings off. <laughs> I'm going to do some cathedral windows. I'm going to show you cathedral windows. I'm going to show you the real easy cheat way of doing them today. Um, but um, I've got a few things I need to go through first with you. Um, the latest raffle, the food one, there's only three left on that one. So if anybody does want to go, um, grab them quick because there's only three three spots left on that one. Um, obviously, they're on the website as normal. Um, we've got a free, a free draw, which I forgot to do on Wednesday. And then Sarah forgot to do yesterday. So we're going to do that in a moment. Um, and... Well, actually, let's do that now. Let's do that now. So this was from the Facebook Live that we did on Tuesday night on the craft shows. And it's to win one of the mug mats. So everybody that commented on that on that video, um, we put everybody's names in the hat. And I think there's something like 83, 84 comments. There's lots of you in here. So everybody's in here. OK, so I'm going to give it a good shake. Make some noise. And get Drew to pop his hand in and pull a winner. Have a good delve around with Drew. Okay. Oh, got one. Oh, it's attached to each other. Oh, okay. Let's shake it out. Oh, and then let's have the one you've actually got your fingers on, not the one that's attached. There we go. That's there we go. <laughs> you actually had your fingers on that one. Uh, Naomi Helks. I think that's how you pronounce your surname. Naomi Helks. We will um, drop you a message later. Um, I don't know if you're on this one, this one, or whether you're on the on the other one, but I will drop you a message. And you can you've won one of the mug mat packs okay so that's that one out of the way tick off my list who's coming online he's there today so before i do the next one we got Anne, we've got carrie we've got suzanne grace fab ali helen christine lovely Sandra, lovely lovely people. thanks for joining us guys um the second thing on the list was uh well, third thing because the raffle was the first that was the second third thing was the zoom next zoom class has gone live that went on the website at 9 a.m this morning um, it's for a big project bag using a charm pack and um, lining fabric and, and wadding. Um, it's a really nice bag. It's um, We have done it as a class in the shop a couple of times. Uh, and uh, it's named the Carrie bag because it was inspired after a bag that, that Carrie, who's one of our regulars, came came in with that she'd made. And um, I tweaked it a little bit and boxed it off and stuff So um, and wrote a pattern up for it. So that's what we're going to be doing on the next Zoom class. Um, it's next Thursday, so if you want to do it, you need to have bought it by Tuesday at the latest so that I can get the kit out for you. The kit includes all of your lining fabric and your wadding and the pattern, which we'll send out. You will need a charm pack or um, five inch squares, which you can cut out of your stashes, okay? So you that's not included because obviously everybody wants their colours to be different. So um, we have got a choice of lining colours though. So. Um, it's next Thursday and I think it's from 10.30 till 12.30 and then we'll take a little break and then we'll come back in the afternoon for the second session to finish off. You will obviously need access to Zoom as well so you'll need a laptop or something or, or an iPad so you can actually see what's happening. Um, so that's gone live. It is a um, maximum of eight places. OK, um, I, I don't think more than that. It's not fair to everybody on, on screen because you all need time for me to be able to see what you're doing and everything. So that's that one's up and running. If you'd like to join us for that, please do um, go on and, and buy that one. You can only buy those through the website as well. So you need to go on the website and, and buy that one. Um, and then the last thing is we <laughs> Sean and Sarah, I've roped Sean and Sarah into a charity challenge. I'm I'm not going to give you the details yet because we're just still working out everything. But what I'd like you guys to do is nominate some charities, okay? This is going to be a massive undertaking for, for me, Sean and Sarah. <laughs> I can't believe we've actually talked ourselves. It, was, it seemed like such a brilliant idea last night, and now it's all like, oh my God, one in the morning. But we're going to do it. We're going to do this. We're going to raise some money for charity. So what we'd like you guys to do, because we want to get you guys to be involved, is to nominate some charities, something that's close to your heart, something you, you know, feel maybe, you know, it could be local, it could be non-local, whatever you like. What I'd like you to do is um, I will put a post up on Facebook and we'll put one on Instagram as well and comment under that post. What we'll do then is we'll put all the charities into a hat and we will pick two and then any proceeds will go to the two, to two charities. So start putting your thinking caps on. 
we're hoping we're going to announce the uh, the challenge next week maybe Monday or Tuesday next week um, it's a biggie it's going to be difficult but <laughs> it's going to be fun so please please do nominate some charities okay so I think that's all the news I've got for you I think so anything else I had to do Drew I think that was it wasn't it yeah, there we go. that was it right so my PA's uh, got, I can put my list away now <laughs> Right, on to cathedral windows. So there are lots and lots of different ways of doing cathedral windows, lots and lots. Um, uh, the traditional way is all like hand sewing and you have to bag out your squares and, and everything. Um, it's very time consuming. It's a nice gentle thing to do, but it is time consuming. So um, there are some more cheats methods, more, well, not maybe cheats methods, quicker methods, a way of doing it, okay? So um, I'm gonna show you one of those today, all right? Um, I'm, we're going to be using charm packs and I'll go through the details of that um, but I'm going to show you this one which is a sample I made a little while ago um, oh, it's upside down hopefully you can see this guys can, if you can see this um, so this is a cathedral window okay and this was done with this it was a mixture of like the traditional technique and a machine technique um, which I'm going to light down a second um, it's still not finished because as with half of my samples, things don't get finished because actually I need to be able to put these here and and do them around the edges before I make it. I'm going to probably make a really large cushion cover, I think. Um, I love this fabric. I, it was one of my favourite things we've ever had in with these fabrics. Just oh, little bears and squirrels. I loved it, loved it, loved it. But this is the kind of look you're, you're going for, okay? Sometimes you see buttons in the centre. I mean, in particular, I'd probably put a button on that one because it's a bit wonky. Um, but this was kind of a mixture of two like traditional hand sewing and machine sewing technique. However, there is um, the there is a, quite a lot of tutorials online for the technique I'm going to show you today, which gives you exactly the same look. But boy, is it quick and it's so easy to do. OK, so that's what we're going to do today. So just before I uh, start on all that, who's there? Anybody saying any anybody got any questions? Mm. Anybody saying anything? Linda and Jackie say hi. Hi, yeah. Uh, there was one question. Uh, Caroline says that was uh, was a brilliant idea last night. Was there any alcohol involved? <laughs> there really wasn't. There really wasn't any alcohol involved. And it was a friend, a different friend, that had sparked the idea. And before you know it, I we took Sean, I took Sean and Sarah into it, and then it's it's evolved into something um, completely different. <laughs> So yeah, I'm not going to give you any details there. You're going to have to be in suspense over the weekend. So, um, any other questions there before I get going? No, but we got no. Cara watching as well. Hi, Cara. Um, right, so we're going to do it. So there is a really amazing, um, I'm sure all of you quilters out there have already have heard of Missouri Star Quilt Company of Jenny Doan. She does a really amazing uh, YouTube tutorial on this. Okay, so if you, you know, if you want to not listen to me for a change, she has got the same tutorial as this, okay? We're gonna be using charm packs because it's all pre-cut. You don't have to, you can cut your own squares. And as long as all the squares are the same in this, um, it works, okay? So it doesn't matter if they're two and a half inch squares or five inch squares or you know, 12 inch squares, you can massive blocks, you know? Um, it all works, okay? So you can cut your own, but for ease and quickness, I like pre-cuts for this. So I'm using, uh, and we've just had these back in stock actually, I'm using the Grunge uh, 5 in, uh, Charm Pack um, in the Creme, which is all, they're all the cream ones. So this is brilliant for this, okay? Rather than having to cut down all my, um, all my sashing fabric, I'm using the Charm Pack. And then the other one I'm using is, I'm using, sorry, excuse me, I'll hiccup some of my cup of tea. Um, I'm using up, um, the end of a charm pack that I used for something else. This was about half a charm pack left over. And this was the print shop, which again is a Moda one, um, which again are on our website um, if you want them. First thing you want to do is decide what you're gonna have as your background fabrics here, okay? And we're gonna make one of these blocks and then I'm gonna show you how to put them together and how to do all the stitching. So you want four to start with. So I'm gonna grab four of these. I did have them ready. Jackie asked, do you have any charm, uh, charm squares similar? Uh, to, yeah, I've got, both of these are on our website. This is called Print Shop, and this is the Grunge Creme. Okay, so both of these are on our on our website, hun. Um, 
Okay, so I'm going to choose four like that. There we go, I'm going to have those four this time. And then I need four of the, my cream ones. So one, two, three, four. And again, you don't have to use charm packs. You can absolutely cut your own, you know, cut your own out of, um, of, out of your stash, out of meterage, but this makes it quicker. And we're going to fold these in half diagonally like that and iron in and you want a really nice crisp line okay so I want four of these for one and I'm ironing them sorry I should have said I'm ironing them wrong sides together okay like that so the right side is out okay so iron this one so I'm just going to iron these four so two Right. This this method of doing it, doing it like this as well, it, it might be a cheats one. It also use, uses a lot less fabric than the, the old technique. The old technique, you would have to cut almost uh, each one of these would be four times the size of this. And you have to fold them and stuff where this is, is a lot less wasteful with your fabric. OK, so four of these and I'm going to place these on top of this. And I would do it like this. I would lay them out like this rather than trying to do it individually because you want to, because if these are directional, luckily these ones aren't directional. But if they were directional, you want to make sure that they're going the right way. So I'm going to place these on top, lining up those raw edges like that to make a little diamond in the centre. Like that. Okay. And you want to pin them in place because you really don't want these to move. Now I'm going to pin along this fold. I don't want to pin up here on any of the sides because I'm going to be stitching there. So I'm going to pin them down here like this. Everybody with me so far? Yeah, Linda Tonsons, could you hand sew this technique? Yes, you could hand sew this, absolutely. However, when you see how quick it is on the machine, you might not want to, lovely. Okay. Now we're going to sew these two just like a four patch. So we're going to treat this all as one piece of fabric. So I'm going to sew this one to this one, this one to this one. Okay, so I'm going to sew it on like this. Now, I like to use clips for this rather than pins because I've got quite a lot of, you know, you look at it, I've got a lot of layers of fabric. I've got the charm pack, I've got a folded, so there's three there and three on the other one. So I've got six layers of fabric and I just find the clips you know these little binding clips work really well for this because you've got a lot of fabric there and it just really helps stop the move moving now we don't have any clips in the shop at the moment however if you go onto the the a word the amazon word um they've got these little tins with like 200 clips in them for about seven eight quid I, we can't compete with that and frankly if you use them and lose them as much as i do that's the best way of buying them. The Wonder Clips, the Clover Wonder Clip Clips are better. They are much stronger, but you they're about 10 quid for 10. They're expensive, okay? So um, I buy them off Amazon. So there we go. So I'm just lining that up and again, clipping that one in. And we're gonna stitch down these two. I'm gonna stitch down this line here and here, okay? Now, we're not going to stitch a quarter of an inch on this. You need more, um, you need more seam allowance, okay? Let me just this out of the way. You need more seam allowance than that. So you want about three eighths of an inch. What I tend to do is use edge of foot. So I've got my normal foot on, in the, and my needle in the central position, and I'm gonna do normal, just edge of foot, which is about three eighths of an inch on, on my machine. Um, a quarter of an inch is just a little bit too small for, how, for this amount of fabric and how we're going to manipulate it okay so I find edge of foot foot is fab for this so while I'm stitching down any comments Drew uh, no we've got Jane Case she's watching it hi again. Jane okay so I'm going to stitch down these here like that and then I'm going to do the same on this one Harry Potter on in the background, Jane. Dobby's just been given a sock. I love these things. <laughs> Jane's also a massive Harry Potter fan. <laughs> there we go. So I've stitched down there like that. 
Okay. On both of them. Oh, let's clip that one. And you want to iron these seams open. I know we don't normally do that with quilting, but the amount of bulk there will be on this, they need to be open. Okay. It will make life a lot easier. So I'm just, sorry, Drew. It's really dark in here again today, even though the sun's out. So I just start by kind of finger pressing it to start with and then giving it a good press. Okay, because again, you want it as flat as possible because it's a massive amount of bulk. And then on this side, I'm going to give it another press as well to really get that nice and flat. Okay, and then we'll do it on the other one. Everybody okay so far? You all, all with me, ladies and gents? Chain case says free elf. <laughs> There we go, like that. Okay. And again here. There we go. Right. So I now want to sew these together to complete my four patch. Okay. I'm going to leave those pins in, in there because you don't want anything flapping around. So I'm going to put them right sides together. And you really, really, I would use a pin here because it's easier. You really want to get those centre seams lined up. So you want to make sure that the centre seam here is lined up with that centre seam there. So, you know, take your time and get that lined up and pin it in. Okay, so I would pin that one in like that. And then go back to my clips and just line these up to make sure that they're all edge to edge. And pop my clips in again and then I'm going to stitch down this one okay so here we go like that oh, let's go that one that side one more clip and that one that side and again I'm using the same seam allowance I'm going to stitch down this way okay and you will be surprised how quickly this comes together right well hopefully you'll be surprised hopefully it'll be like oh wow not just like oh boring <laughs> There we go. So I'd go a bit slower. I have put a brand new needle in as well, okay? Because you are punching through quite a lot of layers at this point. So, um, you know, make life easy on yourself. Put, put a new needle in and go a bit slower and make sure you're really getting that nice and, uh, that line nice and even. Ooh, that was a bit fast, wasn't it? <laughs> have to be saying go slow. <laughs> Here we go like that and again oh, take that pin out the center and again I want to iron this open so find the that middle seam oh, where is it there it is Jenny asked did you order another machine I haven't yet no I haven't I've just been too busy I'm going to that is that is my plan this weekend is eventually I will find some time to actually uh, get it sorted <laughs> so oh, that was hotter than uh, I was expecting <laughs> But yes, um, I am going to, but it's just been a busy couple of days. Busy, busy couple of days. And then before I know it, it's half past nine and I'm still hootling, writing patterns and things. So there we go. So give that a really good press. You could give it a bit of a spritz of starch at this point as well, or best press. That will help that lie flat. And then again, from this side too. Okay. Sandra asks, is it the same method we used in the class? Uh, very slightly different very slightly different um, this is a lot quicker a lot lot quicker it's um, it's a variation of the one that we did in class um, since because I think it was about a year ago or so now sorry my t-shirts drive me potty I've got you know one of the little tag things it's itching me like hell um, sorry it's me just scratching away live <laughs> um, since we did that class what was it it must have been about a year ago um, I've since discovered this technique this is really easy. It's, a, it's very similar though, okay? I can take these pins out now. Jenny Brooks asks, what make is the iron? Uh, mine's a little prim one, but we've, I think we've got some on our website. Um, we've got some sew line ones in as well, which are really, really good. I actually think I might prefer the sew line ones because they've got a sharper um, point to them. Um, however, you could also get them from Lidl for about 15 quid, the little silver crest ones. If you're in that, that way and they've got them in stock, they're really good. Okay, we're now going to add on. Now, what colours have I done previously? I haven't done that one yet, have I? 
No. We now going to add on a centre square. We're going to lay that in like this. And what you want to do is line up these corners here, can you see, with those seams and get it roughly in the centre, which if they're all touching the seams, they should be. Pin it in, pin it into the centre, okay? Like that. Okay, we're now, because this is on the bias, because it's diagonal line, we're gonna pull this over like this to create the shape that we want from the cathedral window, that lovely gentle arc, okay? I would iron it at this point. It's um, all the tutorials I've seen don't iron it at this point, but I just found that if I just gave it a press, doesn't you know it's not going to stay down, but because we're going to stitch it in a minute, but it just really helped when I was folding it all over. Just to now, you don't want to pull too far, okay? You don't want to go like too far, okay? You just want to gently pull it over, and it, you, you'll feel that natural ease where it wants to be. Okay, if you try and pull too far, you end up with all these puckers and it won't lie flat. But you're just going to pull it over very gently, like that, and let the fabric kind of tell you where it wants to sit. I know that sounds a bit odd, but hopefully that makes sense. Any qu any questions there, love? Well, I'm just doing this bit of ironing. No, not since Jenny. No, no questions there, ladies, today? Okay. We do have Pamela Roberts who's watching. Hi Pam, how are you darling? Hope your dog is feeling better today. I saw on Facebook uh, she'd had an operation. Uh, there we go. Okay, so th that's, that little bit of ironing will just help when we do this next step. What we're going to do now is we're going to top stitch. I'm going to grab a pin so hopefully you can see. I'm going to put the needle in about here, okay? And I'm going to top stitch all the way down like that. When we get to the machine, uh, the machine, I'll show you how I'm going to do the other bit. If, like Linda Tomlinson was saying a moment ago, you want to hand stitch it, there is nothing stopping you at this point, or at this point really, but if you want to do hand stitching, you could slip stitch this down. You know, like we did with the needle turn and the clamshells. Um, what else have we done? The invisible slip stitch on, I can't remember now. But that little invisible slip stitch, you could absolutely do that at this point. I don't mind seeing the top stitching. It doesn't doesn't bother me at all seeing the seeing that bit of top stitching on these. Um, so it, I'm going to top stitch mine. Okay, um, so that's what I'm going to do. That's what, exactly what I'm going to do now. We're going to top stitch it. So over we go. <laughs> now, if you've got an open toed foot, your standard foot, but with the open toes, which I can't find mine. It's done a vanishing act makes life easy because you can really see what you're doing okay luckily this has at least got a perspex bit so I can kind of see what I'm doing on this so I'm going to pop my needle in now with the top stitch it's like it's like a one sixteenth of an inch away from the edge it's not right on the edge but it's just in you could use once you've kind of got your he head around this technique I'm going to straight stitch them but you could use a decorative stitch around this you could decorative stitch, stitch around this bit or you could zigzag or you could satin, satin stitch, you could even blanket stitch if you wanted to. I like the very clean look of just a nice top stitch. So that's what we're going to do. I think your open foot might be in your bag. I, I do? I think your open foot might be in your bag. I think I saw it the other day. Oh, right, cool. Oh, I'll have a good look for that in a moment. So, okay, so go slow and steady. Okay, and if it starts to go off, off a little bit, leave the needle in, lift your foot come round okay and I'm going right down that edge okay this you know you see this stitching so you want the stitching to be neat or you know I mean you might not care but it would bother me if I could you know if this was wonky so I'm going to go just quite slow and steady when I get towards the end I'm going to leave the needle in I'm going to lift the foot and I'm going to fold this one over like this okay and put my foot back down so that I can come up to the where it overlaps leave my needle in lift the foot pivot and I can come straight down this next one okay like that and again I'm going to come down this one and I'll show you hopefully you can see that I'll show you that on the, this next join now just going to go really a bit faster to get me down I can feel that seam's moved 
So when I get to about, what's that, about a quarter to half an inch away, I stop with my needle in, lift my foot, fold that one under, okay, and you can use the stiletto, you know, if you've seen the stilettos you've got, some of you might have in your machines, it looks like um, it's normally got a handle like a screwdriver with a, like a metal rod which comes to a, you know, a point, um, and it means you can hold fabric and you've got your fingers out of the way. Um, I'm very aware of my machine, so uh, I'm okay with that. <laughs> After sewing through my finger once, literally sewing through my finger once, I'm very aware of where my needle is. <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to come down this one, like that, all the way down. And then just for any questions there, Drew, while I'm just doing this last one. No, but we've got Sarah's joined us. Hey, you're all very quiet today, ladies. Are the questions just not coming up or are you just too busy watching? Too busy watching. Oh, actually, I didn't go quite far enough on that one. Let's just go up for another couple. There we go. And then I can come right, bring this one round. Okay. So that is kind of one part of your cathedral window finished. Like that. And I can take those middle pins out, flip back over here, and give this a good press. Okay. So we're going to give that ooh, a good press. There we go. All right. Now, you would then make as many of these as you wanted to. I mean, I'm just going to do a cushion, okay, because a cushion cover, because I don't need, I don't need another quilt. So I'm just going to do four, just for now, okay, like this. But and you want to cathedral window this central section as well. So what you need to do is before you join this one to this one, we're going to put another triangle like that okay and another triangle like that so just like we did with these other ones okay we'll pop those two together and then i need two more just quickly iron those All right while i'm iron those anybody uh has anybody come up with any charity suggestions yet anybody got anything or are you all having a little think like i said i will put them on a separate facebook drawer but Mm. Anybody doing anything nice this weekend? Anybody got any Zoom parties or anything? No? No. You're all very, very quiet. I wonder whether the comments have gone or whether you're all just really busy watching. <laughs> okay, there we go. Like this. Can you see how that one's going to sit in the centre here? So I'm going to pin these in like that. There we go. There we go. What did you all think of sewing bee? I mean, did we did we talk about? No, we didn't talk about it, did we? Because I wasn't on yet. So it was. Uh, um, oh, I can't think what it was. Eighties, wasn't it? It was fantastic. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, the broadcast. Someone just started calling you, and it's the broadcast. Do you want to resume or finish broadcast? But oh no 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 no. We, we want to carry on broadcast. Yeah, we carry on. <laughs> cool. Right. Uh, don't Stupid worry. thing, lost all the comments. So, oh, now the comments are coming up. <laughs> Don't know what's going on. What's going on with the tech at the mm -hmm. moment? Some days it plays, plays really nicely and works brilliantly. Other days, pfft, no. So, um, any questions there before I do this next bit? <laughs> uh, no questions, but a couple of comments. No cool. Sure didn't. Lovely. So, I've pinned these ones in just like we did the other ones. And we're going to then make a big four patch. So this one's going to go to this one, like this. Okay. And again, you want to make sure that everything's all nice and lined up. And I'm going to use clips again. And this one's going to go to this one. Like. Right. I'm just going to make sure that this is all lined up nicely, like that. I'm being distracted because I've got little birds, little sparrows, literally coming right up to the window over there. It's like, what is that? And then because they suddenly fly away, it's like, oh, I can see something in the corner of my eye. So that yeah. one's going to go in there. Sandra said, I'm making a scrappy quilt using eight inch 
uh, squares oh, nice. quilt as you go. Uh, instead of doing another scrappy quilt as you go, what can I do? What can I sew with my straps onto? What can you sew with your, your strips? Your strips, sorry, I haven't read that Strips on. onto. Um, let me have a think, lovely. Sorry, I'm not quite sure what you mean. So you, are you doing like the, the strip piecing one that we did a while ago? You've done one of those already, have you? Are you saying what, what other patterns do you want to do? Because um, I can come up with some for you, absolutely. Okay, so that's my first one. And then I'm going to do exactly the same with this one. Christine okay. says binge on watching uh, series six of Rob Gilbert's work experience. Oh yeah, oh my husband loves that program. He loves Rod. We had tickets to see him. Um, was it June? I think it was. We or April, April. But obviously it all got cancelled. So I think it's now November time. Um, yeah, I think it's November. They've moved the dates to. But whether we'll be able to or not, I don't know. Yeah, I bought I bought tickets for him for his birthday because he's a massive Rod Gilbert fan. There we go. Right, and I'm going to stitch down these ones, okay? So while I'm stitching, Drew, catch me up on the comments. What are you, what are you all chatting about? <laughs> and Davis is making a birthday cake for my grandson's fourth birthday. Oh, bless. Uh, Sandra says, you haven't sewn, you haven't sewn that one. I haven't sewn which one, love? I'm confused. I don't know. Okay. Anish? I'll read the comments back, yeah. and if there's any major questions, I'll um, I'll answer them later. Okay, because it might be that that's the answer to something. So I I'd sewn all four down. Okay, hadn't I haven't sewn these um these, these latest ones because they're going to be sewn together now. Is that the bit you meant? These ones here. She just put okay. that. Out. She said no. I don't want to sew the strip straight onto the wadding as it takes so long to hand stitch binding. What that? What, the one under your needle. Oh, right. The one under my needle. I'm confused. Actually. Yeah, I'm confused as well. Lovely. Sorry, I will. I'll read those back in a moment. Um, you don't want to do the hand binding on the back of quilt as you go. Do it on the machine. You don't have to hand stitch it down. Just you know, you do your, your strip on the front as normal, and then normally I like to hand stitch it. There's no reason why you can't can't. Um, Kath Lem always machine stitches it. Machine, blah, machine stitch it down lovely if you want um, if you want to still do quilt as you go then that's what I would do but you don't have to do the hand stitch any bit I'd machine stitch it because it's a scrappy quilt it really won't matter it really really won't matter Angela's also making a birthday cake for a third to her uh, daughter oh <laughs> lovely fabulous um, so, okay Okay. Linda says home. Charity begins at home. I'm only kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I can register you as a charity, Lind. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Just sewing down these two, okay? Which is basically we're just making another four patch with the four patches. Suzanne said the tortoise sanctuary in Dinner's Powers. Oh, the one in Sully, it's in Sully, isn't it? The tortoise sanctuary, yeah. Oh, my mum would like that. She's tortoise mad. She's got two tortoises. So, yes, that's a nice idea. We'll put that in the drawer, love. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't know there was a tortoise sanctuary. Yeah. There we go. Right. And then, again, I want to iron these open, just like we did the other ones. Okay. Um, you can... Um, thinking about the quilt as you go thing that Sandra was talking about rather than doing the strip method um, you can just join the wad in and then put a back on I did that for a quilt ages ago so you can it's the technique I can't really talk you through at the moment Sandra but you if you give me a call I'll talk you through it um, it's a bit complicated while we're in the middle of this but um, there is another way of doing quilt as you go where you sew the wad in strips and then you just put a normal back in on it so that the, you haven't got all the little strips and stuff um but i can i can talk you through that uh, jenny says cardiff dog home ah oh, yeah all those puppers that we'll put that in the in the drawer as well yeah what we will do is we'll put all your suggestions into a drawer and we will we will pull um pull them out of a hat okay to make it fair so these two now are going to go together. Are you still with me on this? I know we've had a little bit of blur with the comments. Is everybody still with me on this? Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to sew this one to this one. Okay. Like that. 
again I want to find that centre seam and make sure that that's nice and lined up and then what we're going to do is we're going to put the clips on the rest of it particularly over the seams I find if you put them if you line those seams up like that I'm hoping that you're understanding what I'm doing because we've gone off track Linda and Jamie say yeah no. good I'll good good watching. It's so quick. It's such a quick way of doing cathedral windows compared to, um, compared to the old-fashioned method. Much, mu and much, much quicker. Ooh, easier too. Just caught my chair on something then. <laughs> Might take my chunk out. I've put the pads on as well. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stitch right the way across now. Comments there, Drew. Uh, Linda's a nice idea with charity being uh, localised. Yeah, um, I just think it'd be nice to, you know, for you guys to have a bit of input of, of what, yeah, on where the money's going. Okay, so we're all the way down, nearly there, and there is a lot of layers at this point, so do go steady, okay? I think it's moved slightly. Just pull that one over, there we go. Okay, right. Got to the end. There we go. And again, I need to iron this one out flat. Oh, take the pin out, that helps, doesn't it? Uh, Lindsay says Dutch hounds with IVDD. I don't know. Dutch elms. Dutch elms are trees. Um, is that a charity? If it is, yeah, I'll um, I'll look it up. But we'll, like I said, we'll put everybody's suggestions in a in a hat. So you know, go with your favourite ones, okay? And then Diana says blood bikes. Blood bikes. All oh, oh. right, okay. Not heard of that. Oh, is that the people that go round on the motorbikes that to deliver like emergency bloods and stuff? You know, if you've got like a rare blood type in a hospital needs blood somewhere else. I, I mean, I might be completely wrong, but I've got a vague thing in the back of my head about that. Um. Yes, cool. We will put everything, like I said, all your suggestions in the hat and then we will pull one, you know, two at random. Okay. Oh, dash, dash hounds. She said, yes, sausage dogs are dash hounds. Dash hounds, not dash, Dutch elms. I thought dash, you said Dutch elms. I was confused. I, was, I, didn't, know, <laughs> with, I don't know what IVDD is. Ah, uh, fair enough. Right, okay, so you can see now it's all joined together. And we've got this one in the centre, which was like which was like when we had the ones here. Okay, so I'm gonna take those pins out, and you would then put right. Which one should I have? What haven't I used? Should we use that one there? No, because that's gonna be that's gonna annoy me because it's directional. Have I used one of those? I haven't used one of those. Let's have that one. Okay, well, I like that one. I don't want that one in the centre. <laughs> what have I got left? Oh, I might have the right in. I don't care if it's directional or not. There we go. Okay. And I would line that one up just like I did. we did these ones. And iron this one over. I'll just move the iron mat underneath a second. Okay. Let's move the mat over like that. And just like we did the individual ones, you've now got this one in the centre. So I'm going to add that one there. Oh, ponies back problem sausage dogs now. Oh, right. Well, fair enough. Okay, and then we'd iron this like this. And all the way round, just like we did the other ones. Pamela says love the fabrics. You, um, loving the fabrics, Sarah, what are they? Um, so the one charm pack is, it's a Moda charm pack. Again, they're both on our website, hun, um, called The Print Shop. Uh, and the other one is, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's called the print, print shop. Can't get my words out. And the other one is the grunge basics, um, cream creme. So, uh, but yeah, they are really nice. Actually, I like these a lot. And then we're, I'd stitch those down. Now I'm not going to do that again because you, you've seen that me do that twice already. So I'm going to just put a popper pin in there like that. So you can, you would make as many of these individual blocks 
as you wanted. So if you're going to do this as a quilt, you would do all of that row together first. Okay, so you would lie out, you wouldn't stitch them, you'd lie out your rows. So it might be that they're, I know it's five by five, say. So you'd lie out all your blocks. And once you've led them out, you then add in these second ones as you sew them together. Okay, does that make sense what I'm saying? It's like, just like we did then. So on this row here, say I had another two here. Okay, before I sewed this one to this one, I would make sure that I had those ones in place because I'd want another one of these middle ones here. And before I sewed this row to this row, again, you'd make sure that you had them here. Okay, I wouldn't worry about putting them around the outsides. I would just keep them to this central piece. Okay, does that make sense, girls and guys? Because I think that's quite nice that you can see this. Um, and actually, it, you end up, like we did with the other one, you end up with like half ones and all, and it's quite, I think for a quilt, this, this works quite well doing it this way. Um, let me just pin that down so you can kind of see the final pro product like that, okay? You could absolutely, you could make just your blocks like that because it doesn't have to have anything here. You know, you could just fabric, okay? So you can play with it, you can play with it. It's it's all about making sure you add on the next bit before you sew it. So if I want there to be one here, I would add them in so that I can turn them back and this would be my extra one here once I've got another set of blocks in. Hopefully that makes sense. So that is the easy cathedral window block, okay? It is a lot, lot easier than the old fashioned way of doing it. You can do this directly onto wadding if you want to. Um, you can, but rather than stitching this down now, so if I just take that out a second, okay? Rather than stitching them here, I could have left them at this point, okay, all of these. You can then put this directly onto wadding and back in so that when you're doing this piece of stitching, you're going through all the layers. So when I'm doing that top stitching, I'm going through all the layers and doing my quilting at the same time. If you want to see that, go and have a look at Missouri Star Quilt Company on YouTube because she does the tutorial on doing it directly onto the wadding. It is a, I wouldn't necessarily do it if I was um, making a quilt, but if you were doing this as a cushion or a table runner or a bed runner, um, it's a brilliant way of way of doing it and you end up seeing all the the lovely circles because um, I don't know hopefully you can see that this kind of ends up because of the curves you end up with this like lovely sort of circular circles happening all these secondary patterns happening and um, any questions on any of that ladies and gents is there anything there you want to ask me Sandra says looks so easy um... it, it really is once you once you I don't know why anybody would do the old-fashioned way now, to be honest. A, it uses way more fabric, and B, it's, um, it, this is just so easy to do, so, so easy to do. Like I said, if you wanted to hand stitch, you don't want to see the top stitching, you can do that. You can absolutely do that, okay? Uh, where is that going? Sorry. Uh, Linda said, very effective. Yeah. And then Jenny asks, nice like an old jean. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's like the old jeans quilt. It gives that same sort of look, slightly different, but yes, very similar. Yeah, where I suppose the with the the old jeans quilt, the charming circle quilt, you the these shapes here, like that shape there, is a little bit more pronounced, isn't it? Because it's more of like a petal shape, where these are slightly, slightly smaller. So, but they are based on the same sort of idea. Yeah. Uh, Suzanne said, "I'll have bell there." Yeah. I should have a go. Absolutely. Yeah, have a little go. They are really, really, um, really easy to do, I promise. Just and follow then, it step by step. Nicola says you make it look super easy. Oh, it, this one is, I promise. It really is. Go for it. Uh, and David said, could you tell us about the Zoom class again, please? Yes, I missed absolutely. the beginning. Yeah, so the Zoom class is happening next Thursday, 10.30 till 12.30, and then 2.30 till 3.30. Um, it, we're going to be making a carry bag. Um, it's named after our friend Carrie. It's I, um, she brought a bag in that she'd made and I completely nicked the idea because it was such a fab bag because it was really good for carrying bits in and stuff um, and rejigged it and stuff. Um, so it's a really nice big roomy tote bag. We're also going to be putting a zipped pocket, an internal pocket with a zip in, a normal zip, not a zippity doodah one. Um, it's £28, I think. Don't quote me on that. 
my brain's gone completely blank, £28, but that includes your all your lining fabric, your wadding and your zip, okay? You would need to provide a charm pack or out of your stash, cut, if you've got fat quarters on the metre there, cut 44 four inch squares, five inch, 44 five inch squares. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can either use a charm pack and we use a bit of the lining material to get the extra two or you can cut your own, okay? That's not included because we thought people would want to make them in their own colours. But included is your, all your lining fabric and your wadding and your zips, okay? Uh, Linda says thank you both very much. That's all right. Very good pleasure. session. My pleasure, Han. But that's not probably. That's it. Anything else? Um, Sandra, g give me a call, darling, um, if, you're, if you want to talk over those comments because I got really lost with what you were talking about. Sorry. <laughs> I think it's because we're such a backlog and they all suddenly came through at once. Do you know what was happening there? Um, but yeah, give me a shout if you uh, if you've got any questions, okay? Um, fab. Okay, I think that's everything then, ladies. I am back tomorrow, and we're going to be doing some reverse applique, um, which I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to hopefully show you two different methods. I'm going to show you a method that I hate, but it's a method for you to see. I don't like it. <laughs> it's not my favourite. I don't like it, but I'm going to show you. And then I'm going to show you a method I really, really do like as well. <laughs> so, and then you can decide which one you like. Um, it's not that I hate it. It's just, it's not my favourite. Um, but I'm going to show you the both methods, okay? Um, so we will see you tomorrow at one o'clock. Don't forget, the there's only a couple left on the raffle. Um, don't forget, I will put a post on about the charity um, ideas, so, you know, charities that you'd like to uh, nominate. We'll put one on that and well done to Naomi Helks I believe it was I will contact you as well this afternoon okay so take care girls and guys see you soon bye